Korean High Elo is an absolute bounce house for new builds and new creations all the time. While some things certainly fail absolutely spectacularly like Aatrox played in the 80 carry position, other ones perform spectacularly well, and today we have 6 champions with new builds for you to try out in your games. Make sure you smash that like button and destroy the sub button, and let's jump right in. First champion on the block is Vi, and Vi is actually doing spectacularly well right now. She's approaching a 52% win rate, and she has a variety of runes to choose from, but her best performer by far is taking Conqueror. Make sure you fill out the rest of your precision tree by taking Triumph, Lesson Tenacity, Kudagras, Perfect Timing, and Cosmic Insight for your secondary tree on that Inspiration Flow. These runes individually really play to Vi's strengths of being a champion who just faces everything head on, straight up, punch things out until it's done. Vi's an excellent backline diver with her ulti, and so taking Kudagras to make sure you're doing as much damage as possible to those in the backline, and tenacity to make sure that people can't peel you off as easily, is perfect for synergizing with her kit. Perfect timing giving you a stopwatch plays to that even more so. And since you're going to have that stopwatch in your inventory anyways, your build is going to look something like this. Starting out with your skirmishing cinder hulk, that item is incredibly important, as it just makes you do more damage, clear faster, and will complement every item that you build in the future. From there, pick up your tabbies or merc treads depending on the enemy team, and after that, follow it up with a Triforce. Triforce is great on Vi, she benefits from literally every stat that the item gives. And with it, you're gonna feel mighty meaty. From there, you might be feeling like you can get burst out really easily, which is why your next item will be Asterix to help you prevent getting bursted immediately when you go in with your ultimate. Outside of that though, your build has no real resistances other than your boots, so you want to round out your build with a Guardian Angel and an Adaptive Helm to give you armor and MR to combat all the damage that's coming your way. The next champion we're gonna be covering is Xin Zhao, and he's another champion who actually surprised us with what rune performed best. We thought both for Vi and Xin Zhao that Halo Blades would be a clear winner, but actually Conqueror wins out here yet again. And I should also point out that it's not by a small margin, we're looking at differences of like 7-10% to in terms of overall win rate. Back up that Conqueror with Triumph, Legend Alacrity, and Kudigras. However, the thing about getting to go Precision Primary on Xin Zhao is that it frees you up to not really worry about Domination, and you can instead take Inspiration Secondary, and there you're gonna take Magical Footwear and Approach Velocity, and Approach Velocity Strength is super or underrated, like ridiculously so. This rune is very strong, as whenever you slow somebody, you get increased movement speed towards them. And think about it, Xin Zhao E has a slow, his W has a slow, and whenever you have red buff, you're gonna be able to proc approach velocity on people who might be running away from you. This can give you the speed to stay in range for your three auto attacks into the knockup. And even if they flash away, it might be enough that even if you don't have flash, you could catch up to them. Because of this more overall flexibility in terms of runes, Xin Zhao's item build changes just to reflect that, you're getting items that are more of a middle ground, so to speak. You want to make sure that you get your Skirmishing Warrior, as it's definitely the best jungle item on Xin Zhao by far. After that, pick up Tabbies or Merc Treads depending on the enemy team, and follow that up with a Black Cleaver. By this point, you have 30% CDR, and that's a lot. CDR on Xin Zhao is actually really important because it lowers the cooldown of your Q, and then every time you hit with your Q, the cooldown of your other abilities get lowered, and then because the cooldown of Q is lower even more, it happens even more, thus the cooldown of your other abilities are reduced even more than they already were, and it, my brain hurts. Hopefully you understand at this point why CDR is really important on Xin Zhao. All of his abilities are super impactful, and the synergy with his Q is off the charts. Make sure you round out your build by picking up a Sterix or a Phantom Dancer after your Black Cleaver. The key difference here is going to be how well are you doing and how much do you actually need the extra tenacity from Sterix. You see, there's this dilemma between Sterix and Phantom Dancer right now where they both have the lifeline passive, and the Sterix shield will be smaller or equal to Phantom Dancer unless you have a thousand bonus health. Considering that your items after that are going to be Wits End and Guardian Angel, well, you're not really getting any more health in your build, and so you really need to ask yourself, is Tenacity what you need to live? And if it is, well then, go Sterix, otherwise the Phantom Dancer extra attack speed, crit chance, and similar shield is going to be awesome for you. The next champ coming around is Trundle, and Trundle is a champion who is getting a lot of momentum right now because there are a lot of strong tanks. You know, think about all the supports who buy Gargoyle Stoneplate, the top laners who buy it, even the junglers who buy it. They're everywhere, and with people having all these resistances and health for him to steal, his value just skyrockets. Right now, his build has seemed to shift away from being more supportive and focusing on acting as a standalone tank, and so for runes, you're going to want to take Conqueror, 
Triumph, Legend Alacrity, and Last Stand, with magical footwear and cosmic insight on the inspiration tree for your secondary. This kind of operates on the same wavelength as like a Jarvan jungle who's building full tank, where even though the Conqueror doesn't help you too much, you still want to build it. It's just the best option out of everything else, as it really does give you a pretty powerful early game. Since you're looking to have a lot of early game impact, you can go for a Stalker Cinder Hulk to make you be able to catch people and slow them even further than you already can with your pillars. Outside of that, make sure you pick up tabbies or merc treads depending on the enemy team, and then instantly after that, rush your stone plate. That item is ridiculous. Honestly, it doesn't matter who buys it, whoever has it is just automatically going to be able to turn into a walking hunk of meat. Like, just think about this for a second, right? The enemy team will have a stone plate user, and you have a trundle building stone plate. If both of them use their stone plate at the same time, and then trundle uses his ultimate on the person who used stone plate, is that like double stone plate power? Imagine how broken that must be. After that, you can head straight into a Warmogs as your next item to make any time you get out of a fight without dying even more valuable as you'll just regenerate thousands upon thousands of health over the course of the game. And in that same vein, you're gonna wanna pick up a Spirit Visage after that to help increase all the healing that you're getting, whether it be from natural regen, from your ultimate stealing health from people, from your Warmogs passive, everything's gonna be increased on you. And then to make sure you round everything out, if you just want a ton of armor, then buy a Frozen Heart. This also has the added benefit of giving you 20% cooldown reduction, capping you at 40%. But we recommend getting a Zeke's, as it synergizes really, really well with Trundle's ultimate. Both have a very low cooldown, and it will still give you 10% cooldown. You're not going to be at 40% at the cap, but it's still good enough. Trundle's ultimate is incredibly low cooldown, and the snowstorm around you slowing everybody down that you're already able to cut other areas off with your pillars just increases the amount of area control that you have available to you. And since we're talking about controlling areas in a fight, let's talk about how you can control how you improve. The first step to improvement is recognizing that you're either missing something or making a mistake. And to make sure that you're always learning what the best thing to do is and to keep improving with new techniques, you should absolutely go check out our website, GameLeap.com. We have tons of guides up there, all done by challenger level players. Everything from the basics all the way down to champion specific guides, there's something up there for you. And I've actually worked on or am working on guides for the champions that we're covering in this video. So if you're looking to learn these champions with their new builds, make sure you keep an eye out for those. Smashing his way into our next spot, we're going to be talking about Galio. Specifically, we're looking at Galio support, which is seeing a surprising amount of play and success right now. It just makes me laugh, man. Like the fact that Riot goes, oh yeah, guys, we're going to design a champion who's uh, kind of tanky, but also is like a full AP burst mage. And we're going to try and buff his mid lane so that he doesn't get played anywhere else. And then all of a sudden he's just slapped into support as a full tank, even though they have all these changes that revolve around him scaling with AP. Just like, uh, just, oh, my brain hurts, guys. Anyways, let's talk about his runes. For support Galio, you're going to want to take Aftershock, Shield Bash, Bone Plating, and Revitalize. And then from there, make sure you take Inspiration Secondary with Hex Flash and Biscuits. Something special to note here is that Shield Bash works in the best way possible for you. Even if you're going up against a full AD bot lane, like say they're playing, I don't know, Misfortune and Pike, it doesn't matter because as long as you have your shield up, you will be gaining the bonus resistances from your passive. On top of that, your next auto attack after you learn your W or after the shield refreshes is just going to hit that much harder. And you might think, hey, Ace, you know, that, that seems kind of weak, man. Like, you know, 1 to 10 armor and MR for free. I mean, hey, man. It's free resist, first of all, and second of all, conditioning gives you 9 armor and magic resist after 10 minutes. It's a very similar effect, and instead of having a little bit of a percentage increase in your resistances, it gives you a bit more damage. Beyond that, for items on Galio, you're going to want to start with a Relic Shield, and then after that, follow it up with Merc Treads or Ninja Tabby depending on the enemy team. Here, you don't actually want Moby Boots, as the defensive boots have incredible value for Galio. After that, make sure you rush your stone plate as that item is just absolutely bonkers on supports right now. It gives you so much free stats. After you pick up your stone plate, you can either make the decision to buy a Bomby Cinder and move on to an Adaptive Helm or buy a full Sunfires and then an Adaptive Helm. The key difference here is what resistances do you need? The Bomby Cinder provides a lot of value with the damage that it deals over time and with its effect all throughout long fights. So at the very least, make sure that you pick up a Bomby Cinder component earlier on after your stone plate. Then once you're sitting on that stone plate, Sunfire, Adaptive Helm with your support item and boots, round everything out with a Knight's Vow. Hopping on into the next position, we're going to be talking about Kalista. The recent Hail of Blades buffs benefited Kalista greatly. And since then, several players have been playing her to really high levels of success 
success, over 60% win rates. For runes, you're going to want to grab that Hail of Blades and follow it up with a Taste of Blood after that grab Eyeball Collection and then Ravenous Hunter. This focuses on giving you as much sustain as possible through all of your ability damage and harass that you get in lane. As you might know, Callista is relatively immobile until she really starts ramping up her attack speed and movement speed as her hop, distance, and speed scales with her boots. For your secondary runes, going Precision is going to be the choice here and especially picking up that Legend Alacrity as every point of attack speed matters that much more and then you can round everything out with a Coup de Grasse. As far as items go, nothing revolutionary is really going on here, it's mostly the change in runes that's really powering her in lane and in later fights. You're going to want to go Blade of the Ruin King first item and then grab your Berserker's Greaves. After that, pick up a Renan's and then a Bloodthirster, as you might be noticing here that Callista really needs Lifesteal to be able to survive in fights because she doesn't really just get to move around freely. She can only hop as fast as she can attack. Then after that, you can round out your build with an Infinity Edge and a Guardian Angel, and if for some reason you feel like you're not really being touched that much, then absolutely go for a Mortar Reminder or a Lord Dominic's Regards as your last item to shred through those heavy tanks. The very last champion that we're going to be covering in this video is Azir, and Azir is a champion who really doesn't get a lot of love these days, but with the Hail of Blades buff, he actually has a pretty decent early game. Because the cooldown isn't reliant on being in combat and just comes up every 8 seconds, Azir can afford to kite out fights as long as he possibly can and get multiple rotations of quick auto attacks in. And because he has all that bonus attack speed, he's no pushover in lane, as you know, fitting in 2 or maybe even 3 soldier attacks, potentially even 4, is a lot of damage. Grabbing Hail of Blades, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, and Ravenous Hunter with Presence of Mind and Legend Alacrity solves a lot of Azir's problems. Presence of Mind addresses his mana issues, Cheap Shot just adds more damage in his trays along with Hail of Blades, Eyeball Collection will help him scale a bit, and Ravenous Hunter will keep him healthier than he normally would be able to. And of course, the last one on the block, Legend Alacrity will just give him more passive attack speed in between his Hail of Blades procs. And when you start talking about all these advantages, you can see why the champion's actually doing pretty well in the right hands, who have managed to to come up with this good setup on him. For items, because you don't have any mana issues really anymore with the Presence of Mind edition, you can afford to go Nasher's Tooth and then Sork Shoes followed by Zhonya's. Follow that up with a Rabadon's to get a huge steroid on your damage and then follow that with the Void Staff to make sure your enemy's magic resist is nowhere near as effective. And then finally, round out your build with either a Leandri's for stacking percentage bonus damage and burns or a Morella Namicon if you need the anti-healing. And with that, that wraps up all of our new Korean builds for this patch. To learn how to play the champions that we've discussed in this video or just get yourself on the road to improvement in general, make sure you go check out our website GameLeap.com. We have hundreds of guys up there all done by challenger level players, and like I said earlier, I'm actually working on some of the champions that we mentioned in this video right now. Outside of just champion guides, we have plenty of stuff there too, as we have guides on macro, on individual techniques and lanes, and just basic skills for you to practice. No matter what you're looking for, there's gonna be something up there for you. If you made it this far, thanks for watching the whole video. Have any of you guys been ahead of the curve here with these builds that we're seeing? Personally, I jumped on the Vi train about a week and a half ago. Anyways, as always, my name is Ace Windstorm, and I will see you all later.